A Tale of Two Compositions, Chapter One, New York, The Meandering Path. The composer was visiting the city for a few days for a performance. The performance, unfortunately, hadn't been that great, so the composer conveniently decided to forget about it. It was the following evening, around 11 p.m., after another concert on the Upper East Side, and the composer walked to the subway. It was a quiet and lovely spring evening. The wind was gently blowing, and that made an awning squeak. It was an interesting rhythmic squeak. The composer stopped in the street to listen and thought, wow, that would make an interesting violin piece, and filed it into the brain's database under remember this idea for a future piece. Years later, in another city on the other side of the country, the composer ran across Albert Einstein's definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. The composer laughed and remembered the squeaking awning. This kind of repetition could support Einstein's definition of insanity, or this kind of repetition could be seen as a mantra that is repeated over and over for meditative purposes to her, perhaps strive for enlightenment. And so the question the composer hypothetically posed was, would listening to the squeaking awning be enlightenment or insanity? <laughs> and hence, the piece's title became Or. Sitting down to write the music, the composer translated Albert Einstein's name into musical pitches. <laughs> From this collection, the composer selected two, and those two became the half-step squeak. But having just a squeak ad infinitum didn't really seem enough of a piece, so the composer decided to have a chord break up the repeating squeaking. But it would always be the same chord, just different locations for the individual notes. Using the other pitches of Einstein's name, the composer figured out a quadruple stop or a four-note chord and ran it by a performer, asking them to strum it like a guitar to add a little bit of variety to the squeaking that had been played with the bow. The performer said it worked, but it was a little awkward. So they suggested another voice sing for the pitches, making one note an octave higher and the other an octave lower, and it became something that was much more comfortable to play. While running through the different voicings, instead of strumming the notes, at one point the player just tried playing all of them together. And the composer liked the sound of that much better on the cello versus sort of the strummed chords that were, have been practiced and changed that in the piece. The squeaking followed by this two chord cadence became a phrase and the basic idea for the piece. The composer remembered the rule of thumb in counterpoint, that a sequence should happen three times for maximum impact. And so, this phrase would be repeated in its entirety three times. The fourth time, it would start but never reach the cadence and quietly fade away. That left the length of the piece to be determined. To be truly meditative, something in the range of 20 or more minutes is usually good. However, in a concert set setting, with one squeaking sound for 20 minutes, felt a little too daring. So the composer chose the four or five minute mark to contain the squeaking that would hopefully be enough to ponder the question of enlightenment or insanity. Often, there's a discrepancy between theory and practice. And although the composer loved the theory of the piece yet, wasn't quite convinced that it would translate orally. So, two things happened in quick succession. First, a PDF of the score was emailed to a friend, another composer, along with the question, do you think this is a stupid idea? 
They emailed back and said no, but had a suggestion. Since the squeak was on the third string, and the fourth open string was right there, why not add that in as well to add some more harmonic interest to that half-step squeak? The composer was very happy with the brilliant suggestion and thus dedicated the piece to that friend, Jeffrey Holmes. Second, to check the practicality of the work with the performer, the piece was then emailed to a violinist asking the question, do you think this is a stupid idea? Sakura Tsai played through the piece and said, no, it's not a stupid idea, and informed the composer that she would be playing it on the What's Next concert the following month. At the concert, there were no program notes, and the composer was concerned about the audience understanding the meaning of the title, or not wanting the audience to think uh, about it as iron or gold ore, the composer asked the organizer if someone could read the program notes beforehand. He wasn't crazy about that idea, but suggested that the performer say not just the title at the end of the piece, but surround it with enlightenment and insanity. 